Hello everyone. Today I'd like to demonstrate and describe some of the capabilities that are available for inserting and updating reference data in Microsoft Sustainability Manager. And we're going to use the Excel file that you see on the screen as the example for the demo. Uh, as you can see, I have four different facilities in the file. However, uh, the two columns that are important here is the name column and the unique identifier column. As you can see, the name actually only has two unique values, Fraser Park and Fraser Park Marina, uh, which means that at most two records will be imported because the name is considered a unique constraint. So like you cannot have facilities with the same name, even if some of the other columns are different. Um, at the same time, unique identifier is a column that uh, customers can use to uh, uh, update some of the reference data information like the address information or even the name of the uh, facility. Uh, as you can see here, I have Fraser Park 1 and 2, and then I have the same name for the last two records. Let's now try to um, import this data. I'm going to go into Sustainability Manager and create a new reference data connection for facilities. I will import the data from Excel and I will select that Excel file from my OneDrive. This is the file that we just looked at. I'll now get a preview of the data that we're going to be importing. And I'll do the transformation step. Because my source data has a unique identifier column that does not map directly based on the name to uh, the origin correlation ID in Dataverse, I will use the mapping function. I'll auto map all of the columns and then I'll reference the unique identifier for the origin correlation ID as described. Now we are ready to import and I'll click create. Once the connection is created, I'll name it something like test OCID. It will start the import process. So let's discuss the expectations that we have on what's going to happen. Because the name is the same for the first two records, only the first one will be imported successfully. So we can see the town Trenton will be on that first record. The unique identifier on it will be Fraser Park 1. The second one will fail the ingestion and will be reported as a duplicate record because of the name clash. Looking at the last two records, they have the same unique identifier ID and that is not allowed. So the first record will be successfully imported, but the second one will fail with an error saying that you should not have the same unique identifier in the origin correlation ID column. So only two records will be ingested as a result. Let's take a look. So we'll give it some time to actually get scheduled and processed. You can see it is now processing. And what we can see is that we have the uh, record here, which shows the actual ingestion run for this connection, and it's still processing. Now we can see this run has now completed. It completed with errors, which is expected as we discussed. We have um, two records that were successfully ingested. Uh, one was invalid because it was duplicate based on the name and the other one failed with an error message about the origin correlation ID. Um, if we review that data under reference data, go to facilities and filter to Fraser, we can see the first one from Trenton with Fraser Park 1 and the second one uh, with Fraser Park Marina. Now, let's move on to actually updating the data. So we are going to back to the file and I now want to change that first record, call it Fraser Park first. 
um, and I will go and update this record and call it uh, Dundas Street West alternative, whatever. So uh, now that we've made the changes, let's uh, just make sure that it's saved successfully and re-import that file so we can see alternative and we can see first. If I now go to the data connection, I can select it and just click import and this will kick off another import again. You can see it changed the status to scheduled. So let's discuss what should happen. So first of all, because the two first rows now have different names and they are also with different unique identifiers, both of these records will get ingested. The first one already exists in Dataverse and has the unique identifier, the OCID column, origin correlation ID specified on it, meaning that any information that I change on the record will be updated in Dataverse. So what we will see is that the Trenton Fraser Park record will now have the name Fraser Park first. The second record will get ingested as a new one with Fraser Park as the name and Fraser Park 2 as the unique origin correlation ID. And the third record, uh, we will still only get one of them because this is still duplicated, um, but the address will change to show that it is the alternative address. So showing that both the uh, name and other fields on the record can be updated. All right, now that we can see the uh, processing has completed, we can see the in inserted records is now three. And looking at the last ingestion, we can see we still have that one invalid record, which is the last one because of the unique origin correlation ID not being allowed. But we do have three records that are successfully ingested here. Let's take a quick look at them. If we go to the reference data again and to the facilities, filter to Fraser, we can see we have the Fraser Park first corresponding to Fraser Park one. We have the Fraser Park. Uh, corresponding to Fraser Park 2, and we have the Fraser Park Marina with address being alternative. Let me know if you have any other questions on this. Thank you.